Hey, hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at another beautiful ship from the Steam Workshop. Now here in front of me is the Cone Code designed by Artist X. But before we go any further about looking around the ship, how can you get your ship featured in my weekly spotlights? Well, it's very simple. You can either link it to me in my email address that you'll find in the About section on my channel page, or alternatively, you can go down to the comment section, drop a comment with the link to your Steam Workshop page. Make sure it's easy to access. All the mods are contained within either the world file, or you do it through an easy method so I can have a look at it. And if I like the look of it, it'll be featured in the next week's spotlight. It's always exciting to see what my subscribers are building. Now, what's caught my attention about this particular ship is its modularity. Now, the modularity allows Artisex to sort of to combine different ships together to get different sorts of effects. So you can actually see at these connection points throughout, we've got one here. This is actually a section that can be clipped on, clipped off. And we've also got another modular section here that can be clipped on and clipped off as well. But let's actually have a look at the overall design and the curve. So like a lot of Star Trek ships, we've got that sort of cascading effect where we've got the top area, we've got a lower section, and then we've got the engine sort of nacelles. So having a look, we'll notice that it's quite well armed for a ship of its size because it's quite a compact design overall. We've got the two missile turrets, two Gatling turrets on that side. And then underneath, we've got the Gatling turrets there as well, as well as two missile turrets in the rear section. So it's adequate to fend itself off against some other guys. Now, wrapped around in the turret section, we actually have ourselves some missile launchers. But just look at the armor, how these blue areas have been contrasted with the white and they stand out, add a little bit of protection, but also look really cool indeed. And I keep seeing more and more use of them interior sort of walkway blocks to create detail and create a different sort of effect within the design and that leads into that thruster panel really nicely there indeed as well as a connector in that section so you can dock something with it so as we wrap ourselves down here you can see the thruster is nicely tucked away in the center as well as the ore detector and we actually have the bridge underneath that is offering quite a bit of protection you'll be surprised about these ships that have the bridge underneath how unlikely unless they're a planetary ship where they're going to be floating around on planets that they don't tend to get hit the most the damage comes to either the top or the right of the front of the ship right here and if you've got a very clearly visible bridge it makes a very easy target as we found out with the caravan in our survival series so coming around down underneath you'll notice we've got this curved area we've got glass windows in there entering back into that area and then we actually have the connection point here underneath the connection point we have ourselves some more rocket launchers so there's a lot of rockets going forward from this design and then the hull starts to spread out we've got ourselves a backup cockpit there so we can control it from another location that's always very very necessary and we've got an access point there just look how the armor curves itself back it's not perfectly sort of spherical or cylinder like a circle you can see here with this top section but you can see how it curves back into that really nice wedge shape and the blue pieces have been used once again as detailing now as we come to the nacelles or the engine base cells we've actually got more of them catwalks sort of interior panel cut in sections really adding some nice detail to it and then we have the jump drives that have nicely been stored and decorated along the side. Lots of blue lighting going on throughout this dive, just designed to actually just create some detail. And of course, from a distance, that blue glows off and gives a very nice engine effect. Now, as we're around at the back, we've got the mixture of hydrogen and iron thrusters. We've also got the access port here to a small docking station. Now, before we go inside, let's wrap ourselves around to this point and we'll enter into the center of the ship itself so you can see there's like a kind of a little bit of a walkway here and since it's all sloped it allow you to walk around if you do need to access the outside and let's pop in through the airlock there straight into the cryopod room the interior of this looks quite complicated but you can just see there's lots of different access points different areas different floors so we'll go down to the lower section at the bottom enter into that cargo hangar bay like i said before and if we go up above we wrap around the side to enter into the medical room and you've got another viewing point into the hangar bay so there's a lot going on here in a very compact package and if i pop this door open there is that backup cockpit so you can see how he's laid this out or how he or she's laid this out and designed a very fast very sort of complicated interior i'd call it a complicated interior just purely for the reason that it's not a straight passage through the center of the ship and then as we enter into this section we enter into the bridge we can also wrap ourselves around into this section to access our refineries and production centers more jump drives here in the center as well so this must have quite a capacity to actually jump and run from other ships more med bays more cryo cells 
very, definitely very important and I feel that this ship is quite survival ready to be honest. It's got everything you need in a compact package without having too many fancy bells and whistles. Now let's check the maneuverability of this guy. Let's have a look at the acceleration. Acceleration is pretty good. We could do with one or two more gyroscopes but I'm not too fussed by it. You can see the thrust vectoring of all the thrusters on the side and we can turn and let's check our slowdown speed. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. That hydrogen thruster on the front is doing most of the work trying to slow us down. But we would have to take that in consideration. We've also got the rockets. Let's have a go at them. So there we go. We've got four coming from that front pod. And then we've got another two coming from the lower section. So we've got quite a large blast area. And then we've also got the merge block. So if we just slow ourselves down, let's attempt to disconnect. There we go. We've disconnected from the rear section of the actual ship. And now we've become this cool sort of flying saucer. Very interesting indeed. It's very cool modular ships. I definitely need to invest a little bit more time into building some on my own. Or maybe even building some for the drone army so we can connect a lot of different ships together to become a larger battleship. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Check out this ship. It'll be in the description below. And I will see you next time.